Hello everyone, this is Quentin and this is an introduction to Edgar Allan Poe's El Dorado. Edgar Allan Poe was a poet, a writer, an editor, a literary critic. He's probably most famous for writing very scary short stories, but he's also known as a poet. Unfortunately, Edgar died at a very early age. He was born in 1809 and he died in 1849, but in his short life he produced a great number of works that still continue to entertain and to inspire us even until today. Now the poem you are studying is called El Dorado. Now this is one of the last two published by Poe, the other being Annabelle Lee. Both poems deal with the theme of death and the afterlife. Now the premise of this poem is a medieval knight is searching for El Dorado. El Dorado is a mythical city of gold said to be somewhere in the New World. Now the structure of this poem is unusual. And this structure is part of the reason the poem is so successful, and also it makes uh, this poem rather easy to remember. Once you've heard it, it's very difficult to forget it. Now, the poem is arranged into four stanzas, or poetic paragraphs. Each stanza is six verses long. The verses vary, according to their syllables, into this particular pattern for stanzas one, two, and three. The first verse has four syllables. The second verse has four. The third verse has seven syllables, and then the last three, 447. So it repeats 447, 447, 447, 447. There's also a striking rhyme scheme. This means that the words at the end of the line have a pattern in that they sound the same as other lines. So the first two lines of the stanza, the last word will sound the same at the end. And we call that A A. The third line is different from the first two, so it's called B. The next two verses are different from the first two and the third, but they sound the same, so they are called CC. And the last line sounds the same as the third, so it's called B. So the rhyme scheme is AAB, CCB. The second stanza, DDB, EEB. The fourth stanza, FFB, GGB. And the final stanza is strikingly different from the first three, and this creates a, a remarkable effect. The verse length is 538448, and the rhyme scheme is HIBJJB. Now let's have a look at the first stanza. The first stanza, as you can see here, I've marked it out to show you the verse length. So this has four syllables. You can see one, two, three, four. Dite, gaily be dight. That's A. A gallant knight. That's also A. Dite, knight. In sunshine and in shadow. That's B. Had journeyed long. That's C. Singing a song. That's C. In search of El Dorado. That's B. Shadow, El Dorado. Now the reason I've marked these in red is because this poem also has a very interesting stress pattern. Some of the syllables are stronger or louder than the others. So this is gaily be dight, a gallant knight in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long singing a song in search of El Dorado. So these stressed syllables, we call them stressed syllables, have a striking difference from the other syllables which are called unstressed. And so when we are reading this stanza, it's very important for us to apply the correct stress to the particular syllable. Also, it's important <coughs> to read this poem with a fixed tempo. The word tempo is a musical term, meaning the time, or how long you pronounce each syllable. You can read it slower, you can read it faster, but the key is to have a fixed amount of time for each syllable. If we imagine a rhythm, or a speed, like this,
that's the speed we normally use for reading this kind of poem, we would have this. Now I'm going to read the first stanza with this rhythm, okay? Now listen. Gaily bedight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Okay, now I'll try it again. You listen. Gaily bedight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Now we'll try it without the metronome in the background. Gaily bedight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Now this rhythm and this rhyme scheme and these verse lengths create this unusual effect. Uh, some people have said that the effect is maybe a heart beating or maybe a horse galloping because this knight is on his horse, sort of a or it might mean something else. These are just opinions. Edgar Allan Poe didn't tell us uh, the deeper meanings of this poem. It's left to us to figure them out. So anyway, let's take a look at stanza number one. Now the first step in understanding this poem is to understand what the words mean. So we'll take a look now at vocabulary. The first verse is made up of two words, gaily bedight. Now, gaily bedight, these words are obsolete. This means we don't use them anymore. But gaily bedight means dressed in bright colors. Gallant means brave. And this phrase, in search of, means looking for. So, a brave knight dressed in bright colors is in search or looking for El Dorado. Now, in what condition is he searching for El Dorado? In sunshine and in shadow. He had journeyed long. This means journeyed far. He traveled very far. Now, when we're dealing with poetry, words have their basic meaning, but they also have poetic meaning. So in the phrase, in sunshine and in shadow, it can mean, very simply, in daylight and at night, at daytime and nighttime. But sunshine also can mean other things. What does sunshine mean to you? Could mean happiness, joy, and the word shadow, this is an important word in this poem, shadow. It means darkness, night. But darkness and night in poetry can also mean bad things, bad times, evil, shadow, darkness. These are poetic words that have meaning that is much deeper than just the dictionary meaning. So now, if we look at the syllables that are stressed, And then we read them. Gaily be dight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Gaily be dight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. That stands a one. Now let's do it together. You ready? Okay, here we go. Gaily be dight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Okay, good. Now, stanza two. But he grew old, this knight so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. Now here we have the word bold, which also means gallant, which also means brave. In the third verse we have O apostrophe E-R, or, or, or. This is a way of writing the word over. Edgar Allan Poe uses this form, and this is very common in poetry, because the word over has two syllables and that would make the verse too long. This should be seven syllables long. and over his heart a shadow. That's eight syllables, too much. So he eliminates one syllable from the word over to give him the seven that he needs. And or his heart a shadow. Now also in the last line, spot of ground, this means a small piece of ground. So he found no spot of ground 
that looked like El Dorado. So he found not even a small place that looked like the city of gold. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell. Now I want you to notice how I read that. And o'er his heart a shadow fell. We have our stress syllables, but when we read this line, we should take the word fell and move it from the fourth line to the end of the third line. So if we leave it where it is and we read it as the poem is written here, we run into a kind of problem. But he grew old, this knight so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. The word fell is disconnected from the sense or the scent of the line that it should be in. The reason Edgar Allan Poe does this is because he needs seven syllables and then four and so on. Uh, but when we read it, we should allow for a little pause after the word shadow, but not so long as an entire line. So we should read this line in this way. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. Okay, now let's try that together. I'll read it once, and then this next time we'll read it all together. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. He grew old. Now in the first stanza, we can imagine that he is young, he's happy, he's excited, uh, he's singing a song in daytime and in dark. He's searching for El Dorado, he's young and enthusiastic. In the second stanza, but he grew old, he becomes old, but he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell. What do you think that means, a shadow fell over his heart? In the first stanza, he's excited, enthusiastic, hopeful. But in the second stanza, he is old. And how do you think he may have felt? How do we know how he felt by looking at these lines? I'll leave that for you to discuss with your teacher. Now, he is, has a shadow over his heart because he has not found El Dorado, even after many years of searching for it. The third stanza, and as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Now this stanza, um, we have the word strength. Strength is the noun form of strong. And as his strength failed him at length, at length here means after a long time. And as his strength failed him at length. So after many, many years of searching, and after many, many years of growing older, his strength begins to fail him. He begins to lose power. This is a way of saying that the knight in our poem is becoming sick. When you become sick, you lose your strength. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Now this word pilgrim is a bit dated. We don't use it very often anymore. But the word pilgrim means a traveler. So he meets a shadow that is traveling. Now notice he does not meet the shadow of a traveler. He simply meets, meets a shadow that is traveling. Now this, at this point, we may have a small problem not just with the language, English, but also with culture. Uh, in Western culture, this idea of the shadow or a shadowy figure often represents death, the death angel, we call it. Death comes to take you to the next life, or at least to end your life. He met a pilgrim shadow. Now the knight begins to talk to the shadow. He asks a very important question. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Death knows everyone's address. And so certainly death must know this place called El Dorado. The knight has traveled his entire life looking for this city of gold and could not find it. And now that he realizes that he's going to die, he asks death, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? 
Now the stress pattern is exactly the same as you would imagine. It should be. The verse lengths are all the same as the first, second and stanzas. And so we have, And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Now let's do it together. You ready? And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Now, the next stanza, stanza four, is noticeably different. Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Now this word shade in the next to last verse is another word for shadow. Edgar Allan Poe uses the word shade here because it changes things up, but also because it preserves the length that is necessary in this verse. Shadow has two syllables, shade has only one. Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. This stanza is probably one of the more difficult for us to understand, but We'll talk about it in a minute. Let's take a look at the, the pattern of stress, and let me read it for you, and then we'll practice it together. Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Now, together, ready? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied if you seek for El Dorado. Now, if we look at an analysis of the overall poem, in stanza one, the knight is young, happy, enthusiastic. Now, the question is, how do we know that from the stanza? What words, what key words tell us that this knight is young, happy, and enthusiastic? In stanza two, well, the knight is old and disappointed. One way of understanding, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, is to say that he is disappointed. Now, how do we know that he is disappointed? From the words, the key words in the stanza. Stanza three, the knight is sick and dying, and how do we know that from the stanza? Finally, in stanza four, death, the shadow tells him that if he wishes to find El Dorado, a city made of gold, he must go over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Now what does that mean? Here's a hint. This stanza has within it what is called a literary allusion. A literary allusion. A literary allusion is when another piece of literature is referred to indirectly. The difficulty with literary allusion comes from the fact that if the reader doesn't know the literature that is being alluded to, then the allusion becomes confusing. However, if the reader knows the other piece of literature well, then it creates a very fine effect. If you were to look up Valley of the Shadow on the internet, you would likely discover that it is found in a song in the Bible. It is known as Psalm, P-S-A-L-M is pronounced Psalm, or that's just a very, very old word for the word song. Song or Psalm 23 in the King James Bible. Now here is Psalm 23. It goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
This is one of the most famous parts of the Bible. And so practically all, if not all, of Edgar Allan Poe's readers in the 19th century would have known this passage. In fact, most of them could probably recite it by heart. Now, did you notice the literary allusion? What part jumps out at you? The Valley of the Shadow. Now, if we go just a little bit further along that line, we can see what he's referring to. The Valley of the Shadow of Death. So when he says, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, this literary illusion tells the poet, or tells the knight rather, that if you wish to find a city of gold, you will not find it in this world. The city of gold is the place you will find when you die. But of course, this is not the total meaning of the poem. It's just a very basic meaning. The deeper meaning of the poem, you will have to try and discover for yourself by doing some background research using the internet, trying to find out what the circumstance was in which Edgar wrote this poem. And in that way, you may be able to find his deeper meanings. But that said, the poem can also have deep meanings for you yourself. You are able to add meaning to this poem on your own. This would be a personal interpretation instead of a literary inter interpretation. What does the poem mean to you is a very important question, and, that one, and it's one that you will have to answer for yourself. But let's take a look at the entire poem. <coughs> and we have here, I'll read the whole thing. You ready? Gaily be dight to gallant night, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Now one more time. Gaily be dight to gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell, as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy El Dorado. Have a good day.